today on HR Trends. Some of the things that I see and that, you know, we, we're paying attention to now, particularly with employee experience being being so front and center in everyone's mind is employers may have the best of intentions and they pass really great or they adopt great leave policies, but they make it so hard for their employees to actually access those benefits, learn about those benefits or take the leave that they have just completely undermined their goodwill, right? Because they might have something that's great, but if it's so difficult for the employee to access it and take it, it's a bad employee experience. It adds stress to the leave experience and it really makes the employee doubt the employer's intention in passing that policy, right? Because it's almost illusory. So when we think about leave education and the experience, a lot of it is like helping to educate the employee, uh, not just the leave event, but their life event. You know, what are the options? What are all the things that you want to know about and you want to prepare for? Welcome to HR Trends. Today, our conversation is about the good, the bad, and the ugly improving the employee leave experience. Leave has never been more important to employees than it is right now. But HR has also never had more on its plate. Today, we're talking to two leave experts about the policies, practices, and technology that can make the difference between a best-in-class employee leave experience and one that misses the mark, putting your attraction and retention efforts at risk. We have two amazing guests with us. We have Ellen McCann of Unum. Ellen has more than 30 years of employment law experience with practical knowledge of the complexities of leave and accommodation management. She's also helping develop and create solutions that enable employers to address the challenges of leave and accommodations, such as Unum Total Leave. Ellen is an acclaimed national speaker on leave management on issues such as the FMLA and ADA, Ellen, we're so glad you're with us. Thanks, Claire. It's great to be here. We also have Miyuki Iwahashi, who drives the product strategy for new enhancements for Unum Leave Logic, an industry-leading leave education and planning SaaS solution. She also supports initiatives for Unum's rapidly expanding solutions business. Prior to joining Unum, Miyuki pioneered innovative employee programs, including a redesign of an employee-centered leave program. Welcome, Miyuki. Thank you. Glad to be a part of the conversation today. So let's start. And Ellen, I'm going to quote something you said recently at our amazing HR tech experience uh, in Las Vegas, where we recorded an interview with you. And you said that we're in the midst of a revolution when it comes to leave programs. You said leave is more important today. It's being used more. The legal landscape's getting more complex and HR priorities are shifting with a more in strategic role. Can you unpack those thoughts? Sure, Claire, and I think we really are. I mean, we're in a space with regard to leave that we've never been in before. And there are all these factors that are coming together to really create this revolution or if I use another one of my favorite cliches, um, a perfect storm, right? And these things are coming together all at the same time and it's really changing the way employers need to look at leave. And so when we talk about um, employee expectations, right? We all know employee expectation is, is a new thing that everyone is focused on. Uh, we wanna make sure our employees are happy. If they're not, they have many choices of other places they can go. And so we know that leave has become more important than ever. Uh, in a recent poll, we've seen that employers are ranking leave second only to health benefits, and that's tied with retirement. And that's a statistic, and again, it makes me feel old, but I've been doing this for over 30 years. That's a statistic that I don't think we've seen before, um, that leave has taken that much prominence and employers are recognizing that. But we also know that employees are taking leave in record numbers. I mean, we've seen it here at Unum uh, for our customers, employees, leaves that we administer for them. There are definitely record number of leaves that are that are being taken. And of course, the legal landscape isn't getting any easier. It's only getting more complex. Many states are starting to pass paid family and medical leave programs. That adds to the complexity here. And so employers are struggling with how to make sense of all of this. And this is all going on really at the same time when we're seeing HR have more demands on them than maybe they've ever had in their careers. I think one positive thing that came out of the pandemic, at least in my experience, was 
HR really got a seat at the table and it was a strategic seat that they may not have had before because this pandemic happened and no one knew what to do. So they looked to their HR folks because it was about people people. It was about keeping people safe. It was about making sure that they could continue to keep the lights on and, you know, make sure they were protecting their employees. And who better to solve those problems than HR? So HR now has this great strategic seat at the table. They want to keep it, but they can't keep it if they're bogged down with all of the administrative tasks that are related to leave. And so, and again, that's happening at the same time, all of these other factors are also at play. Fascinating. And I'm wanting to get us to that conversation around what are those great experiences and what are the terrible experiences that employers should know about but before we go there Miyuki I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on this too you, you've got so much background around employee education and planning and in this environment where a lot of people are choosing jobs possibly right based on the benefits mix mm-hmm. any thoughts on this for sure. I loved, Ellen, what you said about that perfect storm. And um, my my journey started in employee experience back in 2015, where um, in California, which is where I am based out of, we saw a lot of companies like Google and Netflix and Facebook and Microsoft um, adding new paid leave policies or expanding their existing paid leave policies. And there was a lot of um, activity at that time and focus for employers that were in competitive labor markets to really have the best benefits and look at their benefits as a competitive way to attract and retain talent. And I think what's really exciting about what we're seeing now is this is expanding to the national scale where all employers are really starting to look at employee experience um, in all aspects and lenses and really non-traditional senses too of even the leaves of absence and what does that experience look like? Um, So it's an exciting place to be, I think, where employees are expecting more And, you know, they're expecting these consumer grade experiences where things are simple, they're easy, they can access them quickly. Um, And it's an exciting time for um, for the market and for HR tech solutions. And how do we meet HR's need as they are expanding into these strategic roles and really being a driving force for culture and values and reflecting um, the culture and values of their companies through the benefits and experiences they provide. So. I think it's an exciting place for for us to be and uh, looking forward to to diving in more today. And I'd love to begin maybe with, and I, I just want to say we're recording this on Halloween, so what better place to start um, than the horrific leave experiences? So, you know, because a lot of employers listening in, you know, they, they might be thinking, okay, so what are my employee experiences leave around leave like? And have I looked at this recently? And I wonder maybe, Ellen, let's start with you. And then, Miyuki, you add in. What are some terrible leave experiences like today that employers might not realizing are actually causing a lot of friction for their employees? Some of the things that I see and that, you know, we, we're paying attention to now, particularly with employee experience being, being so front and center in everyone's mind is, employers may have the best of intentions and they pass really great or they adopt great leave policies, but they make it so hard for their employees to actually access those benefits, learn about those benefits or take the leave that they just completely undermined their goodwill, right? Because they might have something that's great, but if it's so difficult for the employee to access it and take it, it's a bad employee experience. It adds stress to the leave experience. And it really makes the employee doubt the employer's intention in passing that policy, right? Because it's almost illusory. You have this out there so you can go to the press, you can talk about your new paid parental leave policy or whatever it may be. But boy, is it hard for me, an employee, to even find out about it or to take uh, the benefit. And so we have to stop, I think, as employers um, hiding the information that our employees need. And I'll let let Miyuki talk more about employee education and planning because that's really her expertise. But we have to recognize that employees need to be able to find information, access it, and know what they need to do. I think another, uh, I guess, trick or, or uh, you know, scary experience I've seen employers have, keeping with the Halloween theme, is employers may have drafted some great policies. Miyuki mentioned paid parental leave policies. That was a lot of employers, you know, five, ten years ago, really started looking at that. And those are great policies. They're really helpful for employees, but 
employers didn't stop to think about the percentage of their employees that might not benefit from that policy. So maybe they've already had their children or maybe they're not going to have children, but they're caring for aging parents or partners. And so employers may put all their eggs in one basket, if you will, or all their candy in one Halloween bucket. Um, now I'm going too far. But, but nonetheless, <laughs> um, you know, you have to think about your entire employee population and are you meeting the needs of your employees holistically, not just doubling down or focusing on one aspect of your population? Miyuki, you must jump in here. <laughs> um you know, it's it's so interesting when we think about the leave experience and um, the traditional leave of absence, which, you know, was very much focused on compliance and risk management um, for a long time. And I think that's, you know, what the focus of a lot of employers still. But on top of that, how do we figure out what employee experience means in the leave of absence? And for a lot of employees, you know, they don't they're going on a leave of absence, maybe for the first time. Uh, maybe for the second or third time. And what we found is even if it's the second or third time, employees are almost going through it for the first time. They don't always remember the processes they took or who they reached out to or what their policies were that might have probably changed by now. Um, so when we think about it from the employee experience, it's really that life event experience. They're not thinking about it from the bounds of my leave of absence. They're thinking, okay, I'm having a baby. What is that involved? There's so many aspects. Um, a lot of important aspects are working with their employer or their third party administrative leave that their, their company has to, to be able to take that leave of absence. But for a lot of employees, it starts way before before that late leave event, before that claim. Um, so what we've discovered in a lot of interviews and research is that employees are wanting to get information and they want it to get it easily, simply, and have access to it at, at any time, really on their time. Um, especially in this world where you have employees that are working from home or virtually and they're using their own devices. You know, the traditional work day and how people work is very different. Um, the expectations are different. They want to be able to self-serve information and get things when it's convenient, whether it's having a conversation with their spouse or their partner and being able to discuss their benefits that their employer provides. Um, and what we found, you know, to Ellen, Ellen's point, she brought up a really good point about finding the information. A lot of employers will have great benefits and policies, but it's really difficult for their employees to find and for their managers to find. So if you have great policies out there, but employees are struggling to go on the internet or find that perfect policy document that outlines what's offered or piecing together different information that they're trying to make sense of, then you're asking the employee to do a lot of work and understanding things. And for the most part, you know, these policies are written um, by legal experts and by HR teams that are either very well versed or have gotten a lot of um, great insights from their own subject matter experts at the company. So it's not always easily understandable by the average employee. Um, so when we think about leave education and the experience, a lot of it is like helping to educate the employee, uh, not just the leave event, but their life event. You know, what are the options? What are all the things that you want to know about and you want to prepare for? A lot of times um, with Leave Logic, for example, we see employees that are planning for a, a new baby, um, both mothers, fathers, you know, they're coming into this solution months and months ahead of being ready to submit their leave request. Um, and in some cases, you know, they might reach out to their third party administrator or their HR team, and sometimes they'll they'll get uh, met with um, advice to, you know, check back in when you're closer to taking your leave. And for, for employees that are really trying to plan their life event, you know, they want that information early and they want to access it. And they don't always, um, you know, they may not always be ready to, to share that with their HR team and they want to do it confidentially. confidentially. Um, and so we have a lot of employees who are coming in, you know, sometimes six, seven months early um, when they're trying to find information, like what are the benefits that are available? How do these work with the state benefits, the federal benefits? Um, there are so many different kinds of benefits when you're looking at statutory states that have paid leave programs like California. Um, so there's a, a need there for employees for wanting to get that information early on um, and throughout the life event, really, um, even after the returning back to work. How do we ease their transition? It's wonderful. And and you're both making me think of how. Yeah, well, well intentioned. A lot of this is right. The creating and yet the experience of how the employee 
is receiving that is telling it potentially horrific right like and it and it's so like you're ex ex explaining Ellen how it's so interesting how the human mind might jump to conclusions oh they're trying to hide it from me oh they don't want me to take right when it's actually it's just bad processes right and I know Ellen Unum's been really ahead of the um hack here in the sense of like Unum Total Leave, which is this really awesome, like mobile first way of actually, for example, an employee has to go on intermittent leave and boom, there you go. So easy, right? Using their phone. Um, and how does that experience itself of, like you said um, to Miyuki, like the consumer experience then lead to loyalty or retention? Or I wonder, Ellen, can you speak more on both, both of you to that a little bit more? How does the best experiences then change that? I think the best experiences are experiences that mimic or mirror what our employees are doing outside of work, right? And so we need to come into the age where we recognize that our employees are, you know, calling for a car on their phone or groceries and, and they're having all these great digital experiences. And a lot of employers are still asking employees to fax them medical information or to call five people in order to ask for leave. And so we're taking what is already a stressful, confusing experience and making it unfamiliar to employees who are living in a digital world. And so we need to bring that digital world to them. Uh, and we need to give employees those experiences that match the experiences they're having in their lives, right? But not only that, we can't stop there because we know that not everyone wants a digital experience. Um, so there will still be employees who would like to pick up the phone and speak to someone. So that has to be there, has to be an option for them. And so it's really about, yes, making a more modern leave experience, having those digital capabilities, but also meeting employees where they are and letting them communicate with their employer or their leave administra administrator in the way and the method that makes the employee feel more comfortable and meets that employee's need. Recognizing, you know, Miyuki said it best, this is a very personal experience for the employee. Even if they've done this a couple of times, it's still going to be stressful. They still need to have education information. And so what's the best way to get that information to them? It's to allow them to choose the way they communicate and the way they interact. And so making sure that you have multi-channel communication is, in my mind, the best way to meet the employee where they are and give them that good experience that they deserve. Wonderful. Miyuki, I'd love to hear from you as well on that. Yeah, I loved uh, what you said, Ellen, about meeting employees where they are. I think that's like hitting the nail on the head where... Um, you know, employees really want to be able to self-direct and self-select, you know, whether they want to pick up the phone or find the information on their own um, and having personalized experiences. We talked a lot earlier on about um, employers focused on employee experience and what does that really mean? Um, and we're seeing a lot of HR teams really take employee experience as not only HR strategy, but company strategy. How do we find products and solutions that help to reinforce the values that we have, the culture that we're trying to bring within our companies and for our employees? And a lot of that is finding the solutions that can help you meet employees where they are. And sometimes it looks different for every organization, right? So I think it's kind of looking to see what are my organizational goals? What are the things that I want to solve for? What is most important to my employee population? And some of it's demographic, some of it's depending on the industry that you are, and finding ways to also personalize and tailor that experience to that employee. Um, and so when I think about the best leave experiences, they're the ones where HR knows their population and they're bringing in the solutions that make the most sense for that, um, that experience that their employees are expecting. Um, when we think about, I think, some really great leave experiences that we hear, it's, you know, employers that are really being thoughtful about the communications and helping employees to meet them where they are. And if they're looking for that information early on, they can get it. Um, what's fascinating, too, is um, when we look at states that have a lot of complex um, leaves and there's federal leave, state leave, there's corporate leave policy, employees often struggle to figure out, you know, how does this all work together? Um, a common practice that we see is employees that will build these Excel spreadsheets and try to kind of map out, you know, how do these benefits all coordinate together and what are the different steps? And I think that the employers that have really um, put together a fantastic experience Experience or bringing in solutions to help them do that at scale. You know, HR, like Ellen said, there's so many 
the things that they're having to work on now, um, their world and their their view has grown so much in terms of responsibility and, and what they're responsible for. And so when we can take off some of that burden that's on their shoulders and free them up, you know, scale those processes, those repetitive functions, and be able to spend the time talking with your employees, I think that's when you can have that personalized experience and a really solid experience for, for employees. And sometimes it doesn't, it means that you can move to technology solutions and you don't have to go to those Excel spreadsheets. And at the same time, you're, you're making it easy for um, HR teams too. It's so interesting. And it's making me think again of where you, you're just talking Miyuki, about the, the state complexities. And my goodness, I mean, when you look at the complexity year by year and the exponential growth of that complexity, you look at all the remote workers who are now everywhere, potentially crossing all those state lines. I'd love you both if we could finish. What is the new sort of tech landscape that's actually helping HR do this, deliver that consumer experience and cover all your compliance? Maybe Ellen, you could start. I know Unum's doing some amazing work here. Absolutely, Claire. And really, technology is helping so much in this space because there are so many laws that apply and you really have to apply some um, logic and some rules around when does this employee get entitlement to a certain protection? How does it work in conjunction with other protections? How many laws apply to this employee? And so being able to build out the rules engine that then can drive correct decisions has been a key to our success. And so we, you know, we have 22 plus years experience in complying with leave laws. And so we took that experience and it enabled us to build the rules so that we can lean into technology to make sure those rules are applicable when they need to be and accurately and the right decisions are being made. Uh, and we're freeing up our people from having to do some of that administrative work that we can do through technology leaves our people there to help employees when they need to speak to them when something's really complex, but it frees them up so that, that a lot of that administrative work can be done through technology. And it also can be done much more accurately because as we build in those rules around the different laws, the different protections, we know the right decisions are going to be made. So it really is a game changer when it comes to leave administration. Amazing. And Miyuki, could you add to that? Because I know the technology is then also helping the employee experience too, right? Right, right. So um, definitely there's so many solutions that are that are available to help employers these days. I think what one of the things that I'm super excited about when it comes to Unum Solutions is we have so much to meet all of the different employer needs. And I think that's really important when employers are looking at the solutions that um, are available out there today and really thinking out the ones that are going to, to meet the mark for what they're looking for from a compliance standpoint and from an, an experience standpoint. Um, one of the things that we see with Leave Logic that's been very helpful for employers when they're thinking about how do I scale my own support? And a lot of that with, comes with education on the changing, rapidly changing regulatory landscape and paid leave landscape where it is really hard for HR teams to keep up with it. Um, when they get escalations or their employees are trying to make sense of things that they're hearing from their colleagues, to be able to go into a solution and learn about those benefits, to learn about, okay, I'm in Washington, what does that look like? Or I'm in Texas, what does this look like? Um, and HR teams don't have to be experts anymore when they get escalations. Their management teams don't need to be experts anymore. They can rely on solutions um, to help guide the employee and guide them in a consistent way and a personalized way, which I think is really important. It's not just that process, but it's having a really good process where employees come out of it feeling good about the experience and they feel confident about it. And it's a reflection of that company. So they're wanting to come back. We see employers that are able to retain employees for longer. You know, the rates of employees returning back from a leave are higher. Um, these are all like great, great um, indicators that the leave experience is going really well. Um, at the same time, I think it's important to think about, you know, how is it helping a HR. You know, there's so much on HR's plates outside of just the leave, um, leave or claim experience. And so we think about the types of questions that employees might come to, to either their HR team or their supervisor, things like I've heard about this like free breast pump that I get. How do I get it? Um, or where's the mother's room? I'm about to come back to work. 
Um, how do I how do I sign up for support for lactation support? I've heard that's a company benefit. So now with technology solutions like Leave Logic, HR can put all of their common questions, all of the benefits that they're trying to get their employees to know about or to utilize all in one place. And um, we think a lot about, you know, having a one stop shop. That's, I think, consistent feedback from employees is like, I don't want to have to find all the places to go to help me out. Um, and in doing so, I think it's also helping out HR teams too, to be able to scale HR team support and have a really great experience for their employees. It's just so wonderful. Thank you both for chatting with us. I know we're going to hear from you more in 2023 when it's going to be about retention, isn't it? And it's going to be about all those investment businesses make into having these programs. Let's make sure they feel good <laughs> when employees use them. And my goodness, when they do, the amount of loyalty that we see and, and so on. Thank you both so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Unum is a registered trademark and marketing brand of Unum Group and its insuring subsidiaries.